Uh, Arturo mentioned that my name is Michał Winkler. Uh, I'm working uh, in uh, SoftServe as a senior uh, software de developer. My specialty is uh, Unity. I'm in the Magic Leap uh, project. And uh, today I would like to talk about architecture and uh, design patterns. So uh, what will we find out? Uh, the main uh, areas are what is architecture, what are design patterns and why are they important, what is solid uh, and uh, sh if should we use it over design patterns. Then I will show you my uh, demo app that should cover uh, the topic a, a little bit and maybe we'll have some time uh, for questions and answers. So what is architecture? Uh, in the following presentation, I will talk about architectural styles and arch architectural patterns evolution. So uh, today I will talk about what is an architectural style and what is an architectural pattern. As much terminology in uh, software development, uh, these terms are not clear and the different uh, people give it a different meaning. Uh, MSDN says that uh, architectural styles and architectural patterns are the same things. But personally, I prefer to think of these in the lines of how Wikipedia separates the two. Uh, the key difference is the scope. It is also important to reinforce uh, the idea that architectural styles, architectural patterns and design patterns are not mutually exclusive. They are complementary and they all can uh, teach us something, although, as usual, they should be used only when needed. Architectural styles tell us in a very broad strokes how to organize our code. It's uh, the highest level of granularity and it specifies layers, uh, high level modules of the application and how those modules and the layers interact with each other, the relations uh, between them. Uh, examples uh, of architectural styles <laughs> as followed here, the component-based, monolithic, layered, pipes, and filters, even driven, publish, subscribe, plugins, client server, service-oriented. Maybe I didn't uh, mention some, but these are in general. An architectural style can be implemented in various ways uh, with uh, a specific technical environment, specific policies, frameworks, or practices. Uh, what uh, are architectural patterns? A uh, pattern is uh, a recurring solution to a recurring problem. In uh, the case of architectural patterns, uh, they solve the problems related uh, to uh, the architectural style. For example, what classes will we have and uh, how will they interact in order to implement a system with a specific set of layers? Or what high level modules will have in our service oriented architecture and how will they communicate? Or how many tiers uh, will our client server architecture have? Architectural patterns uh, have uh, an extensive impact on the code base, most often uh, impacting the whole application either horizontally, for example, how to structure the code inside a layer or vertically. For example, how a request is processed from the outer layers into the inner layers and back. Uh, examples of architectural patterns are three tire, uh, microkernel, MVC or MVVM. What are design patterns and why are they important? Design patterns differ from architectural patterns in their scope. They are more localized, they have less impact on the code base, they impact a specific section of the code base. For example, how to instantiate uh, an object when we only know what type needs to be instantiated at runtime, maybe a factory class how to make an object behave differently according to its state, maybe a state machine or a strategy pattern. 
design patterns are typical solutions to commonly occurring problems in software design. They are like pre-made blueprints that you can customize to solve a recurring design problem in your code. You can't just find a pattern and copy it into your program the way you can with uh, off-the-shelf functions or libraries. The pattern is uh, not a specific piece of code, but a general concept for solving a particular problem. You can follow the pattern details and implement a solution that suits the realities of your own program. Patterns are often confused with algorithms because both concepts describe typical solutions to some known problems, while an algorithm always defines a clear set of actions that can achieve some goal. A pattern is a more high-level description of a solution. The code of the same pattern applies to two different programs, uh, maybe different. An analogy to an algorithm is a cooking recipe. Both have clear steps to achieve a goal. On the other hand, a pattern is more like a blueprint. You can see what the result and its features are, but the exact order of implementation is up to you. Uh, what does the pattern consist of? Most patterns are described very formally, so people can reproduce them in many contexts. Um, here, are the, uh, okay, so the, the context may be, for example, uh, intent uh, of the pattern, uh, which briefly describes both uh, the problem and the solution. Motivation, which further explains the problem and the solution uh, the pattern makes possible. Structure of classes, which shows uh, each part of the pattern and how they are related. Code example is uh, one of the popular uh, programming uh, languages uh, um, which makes it easier to grasp the idea behind the pattern. Some pattern catalog uh, uh, lists, uh, uh, sorry, uh, some pattern catalogs list uh, other useful uh, details such uh, an as applicability uh, of the pattern implementation steps and relations with other patterns. Okay, but who invented uh, the patterns? Th that's a good but not a, a very accurate question. Design patterns aren't obscure, sophisticated concepts, quite the opposite. Patterns are typical solutions to common problems in object-oriented design. When a solution gets repeated over and over in various projects, someone eventually puts a name to it and describes the solution in detail. That's basically how a pattern gets discovered. The concept of patterns was first described by Christopher Alexander in a Pattern Language Towns Buildings Construction. The book describes a language for designing the urban environment. The units of this language are patterns. They may describe how high windows should be, how many levels and a building should have, how large green areas in a neighborhood are supposed to be, and so on. The idea was picked up by four authors, Erich Gamma, John Vlicidus, Ralph Johnson, and Richard Helm. In 1994, they published Design Patterns, Elements of Reusable Object-Oriented Software, in which they applied the concept of design patterns to programming. The book featured 23 patterns solving various problems of object-oriented design and became a bestseller very quickly. Due to its lengthy name, people started to call it the book by the Gang of Four, which was soon shortened to simply the GOF book. Since then, dozens of other object-oriented patterns have been discovered. 
the pattern approach became very popular in other programming fields. So lots of other patterns now exist outside of object-oriented design as well. Why should uh, I learn patterns? The truth is that you might manage to work as a programmer for many years without knowing about a single pattern. A lot of people do just that. Even uh, in that case, though, you might be implementing some patterns without even knowing it. So why uh, would you spend time learning them? Design patterns are a toolkit of tried and tested solutions to common problems in software design. Even if you never encounter these problems, knowing patterns is still useful because it teaches you how to solve all sorts of problems using principles of object-oriented design. Design patterns define a common language that you and your teammates can use to communicate more efficiently. You can say, oh, just use a singleton for that, and everyone will understand the idea behind your suggestion. No need to explain what a singleton is if you know the pattern and its name. Uh, it seems like only lazy people haven't criticized design patterns yet. Uh, let's take a look at the most typical arguments uh, against using patterns. Collages for a weak uh, programming language. Uh, usually the need for pattern uh, arises when people choose a programming language or, te or a technology that lacks uh, the necessary level of, of abstraction. In this case, Patterns become a collage that gives the language much needed super abilities. For example, the strategy pattern can be implemented with a simple anonymous Lambda function in most modern programming languages. Inefficient solutions. Patterns try to systematize approaches that are already widely used. This unification is viewed by many as a dogma and they implement uh, patterns to the point without adapting them to the context of their project. Unjustified use. If all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. This is the problem that haunts many novices who have just familiarized themselves with patterns. Having learned about patterns, they try to apply them everywhere, even if in situations where simple code would do just fine. Design patterns differ by their complexity. Level of detail and scale of applicability to the entire system being designed. Uh, I like the analogy to road construction. You can make a, an intersection safer by either installing some traffic lights or building an entire multi-level interchange with underground passages for pedestrians. The most basic and low level pattern uh, patterns uh, are often called uh, idioms. They usually apply only to a single programming language. The most universal and high-level patterns are architectural patterns. Developers can implement these patterns in virtually any language. Unlike other patterns, they can be used to design the architecture of an entire application. In addition, all patterns can be categorized by their intent or purpose. Um, the book uh, mentioned by me before uh, covers uh, three main groups of patterns. Creational uh, patterns, uh, which provide object uh, creation mechanisms that increase flexibility and the reuse uh, of existing code. Structural patterns, which explain how to assemble objects and classes into larger structures. Uh, while keeping these structures flexible and efficient. And behavioral patterns that take care of effective communication and the assignment of responsibilities between objects. For creational patterns, we have factory method, which is a creational uh, design pattern that provides 
an interface for creating objects in a superclass, but allows subclasses to alter the type of objects that will be created. Abstract factory, uh, which uh, lets you uh, produce fam families of uh, related objects without specifying their concrete classes. Builder, which lets you uh, construct complex objects step by step. Uh, this pattern allows you to produce different types and representations of an object using the same construction code. Prototype uh, lets you uh, copy existing uh, objects without making your code dependent on their classes. And singleton, which lets you ensure that a, a class has only one instance while providing a global access point to this instance. For structural patterns, we do have adapter that allows objects with uh, incompatible in interfaces to collaborate bridge which uh, lets you split a large class or a set of closely related classes into two separate hierarchies abstraction and implementation which can be developed independently of each other composite that lets you compose objects into three structures and uh, then work with these structures as if they were individual objects decorator that lets you attach new behaviors to objects by placing these objects inside special wrapper objects that contain the behaviors facade that provides a simplified interface to a library a framework or any other complex set of classes flyweight that lets you fit more objects into the available amount of RAM by sharing common parts of state between multiple objects instead of keeping all of the data in each object. And proxy that lets you provide a substitute or placeholder for another object. A proxy controls access to the original object, allowing you to perform something either before or after the request uh, gets through to the original object. And uh, last for uh, behavioral patterns, we do have change, uh, chain of responsibility uh, that lets you pass requests uh, along a chain of handlers. Upon receiving a request, each handler decides either to process uh, the request or to pass it to the next handler in the chain. Command that uh, turns a request into a standalone object that uh, contains all information about the request. This transformation lets you pass requests as uh, method arguments, uh, delay or queue uh, a request execution, and support undoable operation. Uh, iterator uh, lets you traverse uh, elements uh, of a collection without exposing its underlying representation, like list, stack, tree, etc. Mediator that lets you reduce cha chaotic uh, dependencies between objects. The pattern restricts direct communications between the objects and forces them to collaborate only via a mediator object. Memento that uh, lets you save and restore the previous state of uh, an object uh, without revealing the details uh, of its implementation. Observer that lets you define a subscription me mechanism to notify multiple objects uh, about any events that happen to the objects they are observing. State. Uh, that lets uh, an object alter its behavior when its uh, internal state changes. It appears as uh, if the object uh, changed uh, its class. Strategy that lets you define a family of algorithms, put uh, each of uh, them into a separate class and make their objects interchangeable. Template method uh, is a 
pattern that defines uh, the skeleton um, of an algorithm in the superclass, but lets subclasses override specific steps of the algorithm without changing its structure. Visitor uh, lets you separate the algorithms from the objects uh, of which they operate. So that's for uh, the design patterns. Now to the solid. What's that? And uh, should we use it over design patterns? Solid principles are a set of general guidelines that are widely applicable to consider as uh, you go throughout the process of designing your code structure, like dry or kiss or grasp etc. These guidelines are uh, for us single responsibility principle. Uh, and it says that there should never be more than one reason for a class to change. In other words, every class should have only one responsibility for all the open closed principle. Software entities should be open for extension, but closed for modification for L a uh, list of substitution principle. Functions that use pointers or references to base classes must uh, be able to use objects of derived classes without knowing it. For I, uh, the interface uh, segregation principle, many uh, client-specific interfaces are better than one general purpose interface. And for D, the dependency inversion principle uh, depend uh, upon abstractions, but not concretions. Design patterns are usually more local and specific. Uh, they give a name to a particular solution to a common type of requirement. Uh, it's a pre-designed recipe or template for how to structure code that can save you time and a good way to communicate parts of your design to others. Like all things in software design, principles and guidelines are to be applied to, with uh, discretion. They aren't laws handed uh, down from one high that must always be followed, but some best practices that you can apply where appropriate. There is no magic shortcut to remove all thoughts uh, and experience uh, from the software design process. As someone once said, there are my, uh, these are my uh, principles. If you don't uh, like them, I have others. So uh, that was it for uh, the presentation. Uh, I'd like to uh, show you maybe some example uh, for that. And uh, as I'm a Unity developer, it's uh, not a surprise that I wanted to make an example in Unity. <laughs> and the example is uh, Solitaire. So basically the old good fashioned Solitaire, like we remember from uh, Windows XP, probably. So we see that uh, this uh, piece of code works. So I guess that we might just jump to, uh, to the code itself. So uh, I, I'm not sure if you see the code uh, good enough. Shall I uh, zoom it in or? Do you see the code? Yes. Yep. Okay. So uh, these are the, all the classes that are uh, essentially used uh, in, in the project. So um, I divided them into some categories. Uh, some of them are, let's say, uh, the runtime, uh, let's say core mechanic uh, for the game itself, but uh, I also uh, needed to create some scripts uh, in order to, let's say, create assets uh, to, to the application. So those 
let's say code generating, uh, sorry, asset generating uh, scripts were issued and uh, the card sprites. And uh, the core mechanic uh, is, uh, let's say the most important class uh, in, in this whole app is the solitaire CS, which uh, uh, set up the game uh, on, the, on the start of, uh, on the first frame of the game, which creates the deck, shuffles it, deals uh, to uh, the tableaus, and uh, that's it for start. Uh, the other things here below uh, are purely to, um, to handle um, the uh, events from uh, on the click of cards and, and slots, uh, which is on the other hand used here. So this is the simple mechanism that every single frame checks if I have clicked something. If I have clicked something, then uh, if it's clickable, then, uh, then it's uh, going to uh, call some uh, event and clickable uh, things are cards and slots. Slots, on uh, the other hand, uh, divide into four categories, stock, waste, foundation, and tableau, which uh, overrides some uh, base functions uh, from uh, slot uh, in order to make uh, the mechanic uh, for the solitaire possible. Card uh, has some information about itself. It doesn't know uh, anything about uh, slots, which uh, mm, I really w wanted to make it this way. And uh, it holds uh, such information like a card value, card suit, and a color which is, let's say, more like extracted from the suit. And uh, this application is, let's say, created in a game jam manner. So it was uh, created very fast and it was difficult to uh, hold onto some um, design patterns uh, with this one, especially that uh, in Unity apps, uh, when you're creating a, a, a program, uh, it's uh, usually a, a mess. But uh, here, I think that I managed to uh, hold onto some patterns at least. So, for example, when we start the game, we um, create a deck and this deck uh, is creating cards using the builder. So we are uh, passing uh, some data to the builder and then just building some, uh, building a card uh, every single uh, time. We do this only on a startup. So uh, this might be for uh, let's say a uh, builder principle because builder, mm, sorry, builder uh, design pattern because uh, builder design pattern is uh, all about creating uh, an object uh, that uh, does uh, the complex uh, object creation uh, for us, providing that uh, it uh, has received uh, some uh, data. The other uh, pattern that uh, I think that I managed to uh, hold to is the template method. So uh, in the slot class, we do have some virtual methods and uh, their core mechanics for some at least, because for example, in, for, example for the interact one, we, uh, by default, we don't have anything. So, uh, for example, in the add cards, uh, let's say uh, in stock, we we are overriding it uh, in uh, in a very needed way for us, and also, um, oh, 
in ways that I, I didn't even have to add that. So, uh, I'm looking for some all right methods, sorry. <laughs> Foundation, it's only for interact and remove card, okay. So uh, Tableau has uh, the override uh, method uh, for uh, remove card taken from uh, slot. And uh, maybe let's say that it's for, uh, for the template method. And uh, I think that I have like two more uh, patterns uh, here hidden somewhere. For example, uh, let's say, I think that uh, I have here a mediator uh, pattern because the solitaire CS uh, is, let's say, a central uh, object that, uh, let's say, manages uh, all cards and slots. Uh, so both cards and slots communicate with uh, with the solitaire uh, via um, via the callbacks, it doesn't. Uh, they don't call uh, this class explicitly, yet still they communicate with that, uh, and that way uh, they are uh, able to communicate uh, with each other somehow as well. And uh, the composite uh, method. Uh, sorry, the composite uh, pattern, because all slots have uh, a collection of those cards uh, that store them. And uh, the only thing that matters for me is uh, to be able to pick just the last card uh, to know if there is any or uh, what value it may just have. So uh, this is from what I have uh, let's say, noticed from, from this work. On the other hand, if uh, we look at this from, let's say, the solid uh, perspective, uh, I don't think I'm uh, covering whole solid. I mean, uh, I, I tried to hold to, let's say, the single responsibility principle in, let's say, in the builder, for example, but I didn't manage to do that everywhere. But uh, for example, interface segregation, well, I managed to, uh, to have that. I mean, for example, the slot is clickable and interactable. Uh, I mean, Solitaire does an uh, interaction uh, only with, uh, mm, only with slots uh, when, when the card is uh, selected, but when uh, when the card is not selected uh, it tries to interact as well for example with the stock uh, and uh, both cards and slot uh, slots are uh, clickable so i didn't make uh, one a big interface for both uh, fe features because uh, as you see uh, in this case mm, it, it was even needed uh, for these uh, methods uh, for on click and interact to be separate ones. Um, open uh, for uh, open closed uh, principle. So I think that it's also somehow covered here in a slot and uh, and stocks. I mean it's uh, closed. Uh, for uh, modifications, but it's open for extending that. Uh, I think that the, the list of some substitution is not covered enough here. Well, I think that uh, I, I have, uh, that, that's everything what I have for you, unless you have a questions, uh, uh, any questions to that. So maybe I will jump to, to this part.
So um, is everything clear uh, from what has been said or uh, maybe maybe something some thoughts that needs to be answered michael we have one question in chat uh here is asking why template method uh i don't see that question sorry oh why template method um Okay, at first um, I was like, I want to uh, use a strategy uh, pattern, uh, but uh, well, uh, it, it would be even possible uh, if, for, for example, the uh, interaction would uh, get the type of uh, the uh, slot and depending on the type of the slot it would uh, pick a different algorithm from from different script well it it was this way or another so i i, I just simply picked uh, that but uh, i i see your point here that that, that the strategy pattern would fit here uh, better No problem. Okay, okay. Uh, if there are no more questions, Michal. Thank you so much for this presentation. You made a good job. 